All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys want to say hi to YouTube? Because you're probably going to get this way later. We already finished episode two. We already finished episode three. For them, I think episode two has just come out. Join the dark side. Come to the dark side. <laughs> uh, all right. Hi, YouTube. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Honestly, guys, hey, we're a little bit ahead on uh, always on Twitch on stream because it tends to be the main platform. But always give a huge thanks, a huge congratulations to all the volunteers and editors. Like they are honestly like doing everything, dude. Like when it comes to uploading and having it scheduled out, making sure that YouTube, you know, you guys are uh, up to date for as much as possible when it comes to a majority of it. Note that like all of these reactions and whatnot wouldn't be possible without them. Because, like, I don't have time because of work, because of all these constraints. So that's why I tended to stay mostly on Twitch. However, they're making everything possible on the YouTube side, and I can't even thank them enough. They're absolutely fantastic. And so is everyone else in our community. If you guys haven't checked out Pink Cube, go check out Pink Cube. Absolutely fantastic YouTuber. Honestly, like, yo, we had him on here. We have a whole interview that should be going up sometime soon, or a little conversation that we had that should go up sometime soon. And then uh, Tia Boo, of course, go check out their channel as well. They're absolutely fucking 10 out of 10 um which hopefully by the time this goes up probably the interview will probably go up if it's not out already by then which i don't mind dude my main thing and i always state this guys it's always important to talk about mental health subjects and areas that we can relate to and areas that we can go ahead and admire to i will be stopping throughout the entire show and discussing elements just know that ahead of time because that's just the way it is and guys without further ado why don't we just get into it Oh, hold on, Shut now. First time here, saw your Chainsaw Man videos and loved your explanations, Master Sir. Oh, thanks so much, uh, Showdown. I really appreciate it. I hope that it's like, and that's my overall concept with this, right? I hope that it's easy to understand, right? Like, it's not like I'm trying to over explain it, but like you're able to go ahead and pick up something and use it in your life or understand a little bit more as to like psychology or why a therapist would bring something up like that. So I honestly appreciate it, Showdown. It means the world to me to go ahead and have a, like have people come in and comment that. It's very digestible, and thanks, I appreciate that. I also don't like to get too long-winded with stuff, and I know I can, because with Mochiko Tensei, I did, like, a three-hour video, and, like, two episodes ended up being close to, like, seven hours worth of content or something. It ended up being ridiculous. So I hope that I don't get too long-winded in trying to explain the content, but if I do, hey, it happens, guys. Uh, but yeah, Showdown, I really, really appreciate it. With that being said, episode four! Uh, let's go! <laughs> Hey, yo, hold on, wait a minute. Hold, <laughs> Showcat just started off like this, dude. Hold on. <laughs> the show just can't start off like this, dude. Hey, <laughs> no, 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 by that I mean this, dude. Okay, so I'm assuming real quick, I'm gonna back it up, I, but it can, and it did. You know, in a very naturalistic setting. Have I done such therapy with individuals who have been left out in the wild? Yes, only because they understood language before they were dropped off in the wild. And by that, I mean, like, uh, there's different stories out there. Kids who quite literally at a very, very young age were left homeless only enough to speak very basic English or their very basic language and be on survival mode, essentially. Right. And I'm going to get into this whole concept of dreams and memes the entirety of this fucking uh, episode i'm pretty sure of it but with this specifically survival instincts like this that do kick in hold on make me wonder a couple of things right because like kids specifically that end up growing up in an environment like this one when they be, even when they become adults one of the biggest conversations that i tend to have with individuals who like let's say that haven't been modernized into society or are having trouble with it can you guys guess i can give you i'll give you guys a hint hygiene Hygiene, 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 hygiene. For example, hey, you know, you're not in that fight or flight state. And this is, by the way, no judgment because it happens. It can happen to anyone at any time. And that's always a key there to have empathy. Like hygiene is super duper important. And having that conversation with them like, hey, you're not in fight or flight. You know, you don't have to go three weeks without taking a bath or a shower or anything like that. You know, you can shower regularly. You can't give me the energy, guys. Give me all that fucking Syed energy. I'm going to need it for this like this ramble I'm about to go on. You do need to go ahead and like start combing your hair. Hey, you do need to like, you know, wipe your butt, uh, shower, so on and so forth. Like you need to stay on top of your hygiene, but it's introducing it in a way that is healthy and digestible enough for them. Because so far, let's say that Nick, 
uh, Nick here was like one of those individuals and I was to just grab Nick and put him in a modernized society, do you think he'd adjust or do you think he'd mask it? Personally, out of what I've seen, it'd be a lot of masking, right? Out of what I've encountered, it's a lot of masking. Enough to like have a facade, right? That they can fit into society and a lot of pushback and fighting against societal rules and all of these things. But that mask breaks from time to time. If someone was was able to be there, Nick was like, hey, you know what, bro? Hey, I'm sorry. I just had to be a roadhog today. I just had to be a roadhog. Like, you know, we're watching a chainsaw man and we're seven seconds in, you know, but that's just because of the way that like, you know, he was grown up to survive. Oink, oink. Yeah. Instead of like, instead of being a Reinhardt, he just has to be a roadhog from time to time. But that's the point there. Survival based instincts are based off of your childhood and growing up. Right. So that's why that's why like attachment specialists will always emphasize your interpersonal connections, how you grew up in your environment and how you were able to go ahead and relate to other people your age, because that impacts everything going out and going back in. And oftentimes, and I love to throw this out there, the biggest attachments that the individuals have might not even be with the person. It can be with an animal, dude. It can be with a pet. And that literally becomes their family in situations like this. I'm just curious as to where this is gonna go, how bad this is gonna go, and also uh, how rough the scenario gets. Thanks so much for the energy, guys. Let's continue. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, yo, why do I kind of want to be that cow? Never mind. <laughs> A bear to... Oh, fam. <laughs> Down bad. <laughs> oh. Bro. It's just like a wild animal. Holy crap, bro. Anime has changed that on a fundamental. Actually, it has. Anime has changed me on a fundamental level. Anime has changed me at a fundamental level, and I can admit this. To the point where I can relate to a lot of people based on the characters that they're talking about right for example if someone comes into a therapy session they're like you know what my anger sometimes gets like this main character of chainsaw man right <laughs> kind of explosive and like you know i try to hold it in and when it explodes it comes out and i try and tear everything apart boom phenomenal explanation phenomenal way of being like all right well how can we go ahead and like do or even like hey you know what so, so sometimes you know my partner can be an albedo and just be all over me for a good little bit and then other days she can just be an utter and complete like sundere and i'll be like okay i get it let's talk about that how does that affect you right and so on so it has the body pillow come in handy in sessions dollar store i just got that body pillow bro but that's what i'm talking about anime as a medium is so important video games as a medium is so important and like people genu that are in mental health or other aspects genuinely being able to understand this medium and understand the characters and understand the way that people are projecting themselves onto characters onto ideas onto people that are doing this stuff you're able to understand a lot more as to where that person's coming from and where they're going and why they're relating to certain people and like how they're relating to that and like you know you're able to extrapolate a lot more and ask more questions rather than spending an entire session being like huh so tell me a little bit more about um you know the, 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 this chainsaw man that you're talking about right okay so he has chainsaws on his arms why don't you tell me about that like it's like okay i understand where you're coming from we can expand further into that by asking better questions regarding like all right if you know if you can go back into any state, like what other character would you like to be like? What would be the steps for you to go from like, say, a chainsaw man to being fucking Naruto Hokage mode, right? Like, okay, step one, doing this, step two, doing this. You're able to go ahead and explain something in a way that's able to go ahead and be digestible for them. Anyway. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And not just that, School Kong. Real quick, before I continue with this, it's not just helping my interests as a therapist, but it's also helping me go from point A to point Z 
in a quicker mode, right? So in case you guys don't know, I think 99, 98% of all reaction videos on YouTube are unmonetized. Uh, yeah, which is like kind of weird because I know a lot of like, uh, you know, people monetize their content for whatever reason. But the, the point of this content is quite literally for mental health uh, aspects to go ahead and be put out there. Sometimes it's just a good, like, literally we have to be emoji reactors from time to time and, like, leave out that stress. But for me, these stories are helping me reach from point A to point Z a lot quicker when it's presented in other mediums, in mediums of the stories that are being told. I'm able to go ahead and connect the dots a lot quicker and be able to, be able to go, all right, of course, without the supernatural powers or anything. So you're telling me that this, this, and this, right? And I'm able to go ahead, since my neurons are already connected in a way thanks to watching these mediums i'm able to start connecting dots a lot quicker i'm able to start reaching the emotional needs and the emotional impacts that are you know that the clients need so it helps out a ton when it comes to situations like that it also makes you a lot more empathetic to hear all of these stories to experience all of these stories and be there in the moment facilitate that moment and like process it right so that like whenever you meet someone that's struggling through something like this you're able to go ahead and like grow from there. There's like a little fly or something, guys. I'm not just grabbing the air. Oh. Oh, bro, looking at her hands. It's and bloody hands, bro. It's time for change. It's time for change, man. Even in even in therapy, if someone looks at their hands. Just just letting y'all know, our hands are our biggest mediums for change. And even if we don't have hands, sometimes just looking at ourselves or being able to reflect on our image is, is huge. Times. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, my man. Hey yo, my man, all in here like a fucking like superhero, bro. Hey, I am surprised he didn't have, like this bat didn't have like a fucking worm or something inside of it. <laughs> you know how there's a lot of fucking parasites and shit. <laughs> That's like my main thing. I'm like, I'm surprised that nothing bad came out of it. Yeah. Mickey, what's up? Is it though? So I'll even I'll even catch myself and like, guys, can you guys can you guys give a bunch of bonks real quick? Can you guys give a bunch of bonks to old Ed, please? I would appreciate it. I will literally bonk old Ed right now, right? <laughs> and slap. There you go. And there's a reason for it, right? Old Ed was like, huh, that's an interesting ideal, an interesting version. But now looking at it through a survival aspect, especially survival psychology, do you guys know why this is completely believable? Thanks, thanks guys, I love all the bonks. Do you guys know why a situation like this is actually, like, it can actually happen? In survival states, right, and especially if we're not deemed to go ahead and be able to go ahead and, like, you know, if we look at, if we look at the hierarchy of needs, yes, perfect, alright, hold on, give me a second. Give me a second. I, I'm going to bring this up. If you look at the hierarchy of needs real quick, which is always fucking, you know, it'll always come out. Let me bring this one out and let me bring, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at now, y'all? Two hops this time. Three hops this time. All right. If we look at the hierarchy of needs real quick, dude, where was our man at? A majority of the time. He was down here, right? In case you guys don't know, Sex in general, aside from intimate by intimate relationships, it's actually being able to go ahead and be vulnerable and talk about certain things, right? No, 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 no. Intimate, right? A physiological needs it may include sex, bro. Sex and the ability to go ahead and like self pleasure and all of that is a physiological need. Aside from food, water, warmth, rest, all of that, you know, people 
we're, yeah, we're watching uh, Chainsaw Man right now. People need the ability to go ahead and like let let go sometimes, right? So tell me this, right? If the entire time you were in between safety and physiological needs, where is your dreams going to lay at? It's either going to be an intimacy and relationships and friends, or it's going to be down here. Yeah, animals frequently risk their lives to score. Exactly, Mickey. And that's exactly why I'm throwing this up there. Even in this matter, right? If our main man was kept so down low, where his only way of being able to go ahead and like visualize success is visualize, say, sex, or visualize a partner, or visualize booba, it's relatable because it's down here, bro. And a lot of people don't seem to realize, but like even that in of itself is like, it's cool to see them following this, but it's also really risky. Getting the point of this episode. Yeah, thanks, Woody. I sure appreciate it. Uh, you forgot to even collect the tab, depth and text. Thanks so much. Shadow, I really appreciate it. Guys, drop a bunch of Doritos for Shadow for uh, subbing, man. Subbing with their prime. I appreciate it. Here you go, Shadow. You're fucking amazing. Here, here's all the Doritos, man. The self-care Doritos. Guys, drop it down. Isn't there a law of meaning? Yeah, there, there is. In the Netherlands, there is. Lord Shadow is here. But with that, one thing I wanted to go ahead and like bring up with all of this is... With all of this happening, it's so risky because that means another person who, let's say that, like, they're above just a little bit. Esteem and needs, maybe belongingness. They've already gone through this, like, basic survivals down here. Doritos included with the sub. You know it. Um, they can take advantage of it. Why? Because let's say Kraith, right? I love you, Kraith, but you're here and you know I always use you as an example. Kraith is like, he's like, I want to touch Booba right i need the booba booba is the dream kraith is out there like you know glorifying booba he's like give me the energy i need all the booba in the world type of thing right and i'm like hey i'll i'll let you touch my booba if you do this for me all of a sudden i'm turning his basic needs and manipulating it to try and get my satisfaction out of the way if I start doing something like that, if someone is manipulative in some way, shape, or form, they can take advantage of that knowing or unknowingly, right? So that's exactly why I, I'll do anything, babe. I'm throwing that out there because a lot of people, why are you apologizing for the truth, Ed? A lot of people, so TLC, uh, there's a difference between a transaction, right? It's usually people that are on the same playing field and being able to go ahead and go through that versus, right? Um, you literally still being in survival mode and me taking advantage of your survival goal and survival dreams before you're even able to go ahead and reach other areas of like self-actualization. You don't have to reach the entire triangle. That's almost impossible for anyone, but at least being to a point of stability, right? If I'm already like going in there and trying to make use of my own like sexuality, that's the power dynamic. Yeah, the power dynamic at play is super duper important. Who has power over and who has power under? <clears throat> how is that power being distributed and what specifically is the transaction if we're going to call it that way that is being left here right so that's that's exactly why i'm throwing that out there because power dynamics can come into play and manipulating a person's like dream let's say creates dream for a booba or creates dream for anything can come back in some of the most toxic ways out there and just destroy stuff altogether so if we're going to Brenner with this, I know, Kraith, your dream for the boob, your dream for the booba. Guys, what is the second thing that we see here? Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. We're going to put our, our main man in here. The developing child. This could, this could be even for adults as well, by the way. What is this? Age. Sex. Guess what? That's huge. Health, abilities, temperament. These are immediacies before we can even start looking at the exosystem and understanding. If they don't have a good understanding of this, all of the, the rest of this is just happening and they're completely unaware of it. To them, oh, I just like, it's it, it happens. It happens, right? Oh, he, he, he might be aware. They might be aware. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm being pushed down by the boss, by boss man, whatever, right? But taking into place like the educational system at play government agencies you know how mass media uh, or big organization peer groups whatever is impacting him or impacting anyone outside of the realm of thought if this isn't met if this is by the way another way to look at maslow if this isn't in the immediacy met this is the train of thought that is literally going to be there i'm not liking where i see myself in this diagram 
this is the ecological need. So essentially, as one pushes forward change time society, it impacts in and it impacts out. And that's exactly why I'm putting that out there, guys. Everything is impacting uh, in and everything impacts out. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I'm thinking how badly does everything smell in here, dude? Like... Don't tell me. Don't. Oh. Oh no. You. You. Oh no. Did you just link it together? Hold on, guys. Th this. This scares me right here. This scares me right here. Did she just realize that her boobs have power? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, it's also a really sweet action that, like, he's, like, you know, going out of his way <laughs> to, like, <laughs> protect her. But, like, hey, yo, I hope, I hope that where my mind is going, it doesn't end up being this, you know? <laughs> Oh. Can you imagine? Oh my god, okay. Think about it like this, dude. My man's on a mission where he just ignores all the guts and everything that's being spilled around him. He falls on them and it cushions him, dude. Like, it's all just cushion, dude. This is safer than the fucking Twitch pit at, like, TwitchCon. <laughs> <laughs> he at least doesn't break his fucking tailbones by falling on it. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck, Twitch, it's a joke, it's a joke. Dude, don't, <laughs> don't come after me here, dude. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Twitch, don't ban us. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a joke? Oh, dude, I'm sorry. That was a... Uh, now I feel like it's talking to me, bro. Holy fuck. Right, Faz? Right? <sighs> oh, I'm fucking crying, bro. Fuck. Koumori <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yo, but what that mouth do? Yeah, yeah. Survival instincts will probably go through the roof. That's probably what's going to keep you alive. My thing, though, is once, once he manages to go ahead and do that, when, when he does, it'll transition from that to something else, especially if he's still in the in the survival areas, right? So he'll probably transition from one to two to three until he keeps moving up, right? Until he keeps moving into an area where he's happy with himself and he's happy with the, like, security, safety, physiological needs, psychological needs, so on and so forth, where he can be like, okay, I no longer need a boobs. I need a partner, you know? After I don't need a partner, I need to make a life, or so on and so forth. <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> but that is his reason. Who are we to judge his reason, bro? Fuck, Fuck dude. It's chainsaw time. Oh, 
復讐だな家族守りたいだの猫救うだのフーハーだのゴーだのみんな偉い夢持ってていいな He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Who are we to judge someone by their dreams? Straight up, bro. You want that amazing anime waifu body pillow? That is your dream? Fucking make it happen. You want to get up and like literally whack off fucking three times a day because apparently you never get the chance to? Who the, who the fuck am I to judge? Make it happen. You want to change the world and find the cure for cancer? Who the fuck are we to judge? Make it happen, guys. Make your dreams come true. Like, you know, like literally no one can judge your dreams worse than yourself, right? Only you can put your own shit down. And in this position, hey, being in a survival instinct, being in an environment like this, it happens, bro. It happens. People, like, what if, per okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Within reason, hold on. Within reason, masters. But, like, legitimately, when it comes to this specifically, if put in a survival instinct, if put in a survival instinct, who is to take the value of one dream being higher than another, right? If my dream is to live a happy life and that makes me content to my soul versus someone who's only dreaming about money, who are we to judge what the value of that is? And I think that's, that's important with that. Everyone has different dreams, different expectations. We all do, right? Based on what we're going through in life, what we've experienced, so on and so forth. In this scenario particularly, it's so fucking amazing that he brings this up. Everyone's dreams are different. That doesn't make your dream a hot shit. That doesn't make your dream more valuable than anybody else's. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Don't let your memes be memes. Don't let your cringe be cringe. Just fucking do it, dude. Go out there and do it. You know, and take one thing you can do today. To start doing those changes. Hey, you got up out of bed. I fucking love you guys. I appreciate you for getting out of bed. Even if you're laying in bed and you manage to somehow stumble across this video because you love Chainsaw Man and you're like, dude, I just want to fucking connect with someone. I want to feel some emotions. I want to think or whatever the fuck you're out there for, dude. Hey, I appreciate you watching this. I appreciate you guys at home on Twitch right now fucking doing this stuff. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. Mental health, uh, depression, anxiety, everything can take a toll on a person. And me being able to go ahead and state this and say, hey, I appreciate all of you. I sincerely do from the bottom of my heart. And honestly, like, it might not mean much, but just being able to watch this video up to this minute, apparently, I'm proud of you guys. Or even just being able to get up and, like, watch it for 10 seconds, turn it off, go to another thing, watch it again, so on and so forth. Guys, it is what it is. And I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, if you're struggling, if you're going through something, never let anybody put down your dreams. But second off, hey, if you need help, there's a ton of resources out there for mental health. There's a ton of resources out there for, like, um, low to almost free therapy if need be, like... Guys, I, you know, I'm out here trying to promote some sort of mental health promotion, you know, talk about like different elements and stuff. But for you guys to start making changes in your life, that's up to you. No one can take you to like a therapist, a counselor, whatever, and expect change out of you immediately. That's up to you. And if, the, if that means being supported by friends, being in a community that loves and adores you, that is a safe space, then that's what it means. And for the best of my ability... And I guess for the best of chat's abilities, I think that this, this is sort of what it's become. Here live is pretty much a safe space to be funny, to do what you need. To, if you have a bad day, let it out. Do whatever you need to do. I care about all of you guys. I hope that you guys keep doing something that genuinely makes you happy and that you guys keep practicing some self-care as we get back into it. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo. <laughs> Bro, the fuck I love this shit, dude. <laughs> Oh, rapid, dude. Rapid hard. <laughs> His battle IQ is actually really fucking phenomenally smart. Yeah, dude. That AT, like, at, at AT, AT shit, dude. That is so smart, dude. Like, his battle IQ might just be pretty good. Oh, never mind. He's getting whacked. 
He's getting that hentai treatment. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Using your surroundings, nice. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> ram it in, ram it in, do it. Fuck it. <laughs> oh, dude, that's that's how you do it. Oh, fuck. Let me guess, something's gonna eat you. That slowness of this shit, more than likely something's gonna pop up and eat it, or more than likely he's just gonna cut off its tongue and then run down its throat or some fucking cool anime shit. I'm expecting it, bro. Like, let's go. Or, or our devil queen here is gonna like step up and do something. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Cool. <laughs> Con. <laughs> Guys, first off, what the fuck? Now, now I feel like even when I when I'm saying stupid shit, it'll probably fucking oh no. Oh, no, no matter what the fuck, you cannot just tell us the plot of the episode. <laughs> I'm fucking dying, bro. No. I can't just fucking joke around and shit now. Like I got to okay. Okay, I'm think you're used to how anime goes. Honestly, I think I'm getting to that point, right? Uh, Mickey, I'm not even surprised at this point. Yes. Oh, the leech devil. All right, if I haven't seen the most fucking, like, Sasuke-looking motherfucking squad out here, bro, I think we're seeing it now. The Ambu Black Ops is here. For a thorough checkup. Oh. My thing is, in an aspect like this, right? Like, let's say that. Let's say that I was a mafia boss, right? Y'all you, you, remember those fucking ads that kept popping up like, uh, just a regular criminal, mafia boss, or some stupid shit like that. Y'all remember those ads that would pop up on YouTube? Yeah, all of a sudden, right? <laughs> Evil Ed is a mafia boss. If I were to like hear about this, right? A scenario or something like this, it would go from, hmm, maybe this is a good idea to, Hey, yo, this is on your fuck. You, you guys are a fucking team now. You guys are doing it. I don't give a fuck. Y'all are like together. Watch over one another like a level 100 mob boss. Yes, that's the whole point here, dude. Like level 100 thug versus level or level one thug versus level 100 gangster. You guys know. Yeah, you guys know which one I'm talking about. When it comes to something like this, I think that this might just come back and bite him in the butt. I.e. stepping in. Well, regardless, if he would have or he wouldn't have, I think that this might just come back and like nip him the way that he nipped that weird time monster. Oh shit. Wait, hold on. Can it reattach anything? Or does it have to be that arm? Like, does it regenerate? Or is it like auto attach? Sorry, dude. This this comes. <laughs> I know his testicles regenerated. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just curious, dude. Can it reattach anything? Because because if it, if you can attach, 
Yeah, yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious. I have a lot of questions here. Because if that's the case, like, yo, let's say that I were to take down fucking another, like, devil, human type thing, which his right arm turned into, like, the fucking Mega Man shit, right? And, like, I attach it and I infuse it, right? Do I get a level up this way? Am I like, pew, pew, you know, like that type of shit? You know, I'm just curious. I'm just curious as to how, yeah. Probably a limited regeneration. Uh, uh. Uh. Oh, dude. Nobody, yeah. Oh, they were watching you, bro. Koumori,の悪魔が潜んでいたと思われる家には、お前の血が大量に落ちていた。お前、血の魔人に殺されそうになっただろう。Nah, she tried to protect you. It's interesting that he can't empathize with it. And, like, and I wonder if this gives him a lot of blind spots. It gives him a lot of ability to grow as a character and as an individual. But at the same time, if you put up all of these blind spots... Mashiro, I appreciate you, man. Have a good night. You're, you're the best. Everyone, drop some fucking Doritos from Monte Pente. Monty, what's up, dude? Hey! Hey, what's up, brother? I hope you're doing well. Guys, go follow Monty if you guys ever have the chance. He's fucking amazing. They do a lot of phenomenal games, a lot of everything, dude. Like, legitimately. Monty is, like, one of the few individuals that whenever I go into, like, it's a feel-good stream, dude. It's a fucking feel-good stream. Yo, doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. Like, Monty's legit fucking, like, Monty, Aqua, Raccoon, bro. Fucking phenomenal streamers. Individuals that YouTube, if you haven't had the chance, go check them out as well. Like 10 out of 10, mate. 10 out of 10 shit right there. But yeah, Monty, you're you're fucking amazing, dude. Oh, you, you kidding me, dude? You do more than enough for me. You're amazing, dude. Mm -hmm. <笑><笑>あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、
That is so cool that this anime is actually like showing stuff like this, dude. Oh, wrong one. That's gonna be interesting for the editors. <laughs> All right, let's continue. It's pretty cool. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Monty. One condition? Oh no. Here we go. Here we go. What up, Rex? How you doing? I hope you're doing great. By the way, hold on. If you guys want to know who, who's prepping me, who's legit, like, my sensei in debate, check out Rex. Rex is fucking amazing, guys. Guys, Rex is uh, 10 out of 10. Like, one of the most fantastic individuals out there. She knows I love her. Like, she's fucking amazing. I love you, dude. You're fucking phenomenal. Yeah, go some, some love and support for Rex, guys. Mods, shout out her channel. She's fucking amazing. Debate coach extraordinaire. You, you know it. You know it. あんたら見てにゴリッパラ目標はねえし、ちょぼい夢しかねえけどよ。てめえと同じぐらい。俺、マジでやっからさ。ドーンと期待しといてくれ。とりあえず、敬語覚えとけ。ファイトラインソンマ
でもデンジ君とパワーちゃん知らず知らずのうちにそんなに遠くまで行っちゃったんだね。That's a pretty good team. やつらが信じがたいほどのバカですから。巡回エリア内からの逸脱は違反行為だけど。Wait, hold up, fuck on, hold on. Hold on. 遠くまで行っちゃったんだね。やつらが信じがたいほどのバカですから。巡回エリア内からの。Ah, she has a tell. <laughs> Psychologist in me. Oh no, I get drunk and I get super analyzing. What? She has a tell, boys. She has a tell. Look at the hands. Look at the gesture here. Look at, look at, look at literally the body language here. Trying to be in a position of, position of power, right? Complete position of power in here. Kind of closed off, kind of everything. Look at what, what she does, right? Which is interesting. I chalk up to them being unbelievably stupid. That repositioning, that repositioning that she does is really abnormal. You have to remember in animation, they don't just do nothing for no reason, specifically, right? Like, no one does nothing for no reason. In animation, everything is done with a purpose, right? And I, I, I'd love to throw this out there. In real life, like, if something were to happen, you'd probably see that a lot, especially when it comes to, like, repetitive talking. But in animation, it only needs to be shown once, and it might come up later on again for, for it to have a purpose. You have to remember, they spend, like, hundreds of, uh, not thousands of dollars literally, like, animating this shit. Everything has a reason. And for me, this is a key tell that she has bigger plans, and she's about to go ahead and put them in, in his watch immediately. This is going to be one of those things where they're under your care now. Good luck. Probably gonna like, you're probably gonna have to keep, yep, yep. So my key tell with this is she has bigger plans at play here beyond what's being seen. And him mentioning this, it's like he already moved his pawn and she like, she's about to check Medea's ass in a couple moves. She's playing chess while well, my dude's playing checkers right now, dude. Like, literally, dude. This whole thing right here, look, he's he's the one that brings it up. I chalk I chalk that up to them being unbelievably stupid. The fact that they managed to go to get so far without anyone being noticed. Leaving the approved areas against regulations, that's already a checkmate pattern. You walked into this into this. You moved like you moved your piece. Like being like thinking that this was like, oh yeah, you know, they left the under whatever, right? Um, it's just unbelievably stupid. It's like, all right, cool. Now you allow me to like go ahead and checkmate you from here from here on out. Super smart. And she fully rested back, dude. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. This is phenomenal, dude. This is like one of those things where it's like the small gestures that make a huge moment count. Like it, a lot of people would just fucking be like, oh yeah, it's an animation thing. No, dude. It took the time to fully animate it and go through. Look at this. Now it went from being closed to being relaxed. She's like, you're done. You're done. That fake smile says everything. You're done. Is that it? No way, dude. He walked into your checkmate pattern. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Hey, yo. That's what I thought. You're seeming a lot more flexible now. Is that because of him? Huh. Huh. Okay, if that's the case, then why don't you go out and take care of them? Yeah. Yeah. Powerful shit, dude. Powerful shit. Great shit. Phenomenal shit. He looks so much better like this, dude. This is him. Don't tell me Denji's living in there with him. I just thought about it. You want to talk about fucking... Oh, God, dude. Oh, God. It, I, I'm just thinking about it. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and let, let me guess, like, they've grown very accustomed to living to one another. Because when you live with someone, propinquity happens, right? You start, like, 
learning even if it's little by little even if you hate them to like them even a little bit you get used to their patterns which means that you start to stabilize i'm thinking something either like very chekhovian is probably going to happen in the coming scenes if not later on in future episodes where someone else is probably going to be thrown into the mix here or we're probably going to see like oh you know now it's the time for everyone to live together or something like that Something Chekhovian is usually in a lot of Chekhov's plays, right? Uh, the reason why the a whole play starts is because a new character is introduced into the mix. Uh, like, something comes in, an inciting incident comes in that shakes up the whole thing, right? So it's like Chekhov's gun, right? So it's either Stanislavski or Chekhov, right? So someone someone comes in, <laughs> Chekhov's chainsaw, someone comes in and is able to go ahead and change up the, the environment, the format, and starts, again, like the power dynamic struggle, the pyramid, you know, Maslow's pyramid, like Brof and Brenner's ecological theory, everything starts coming into play, and that cycle of power and control starts to go ahead and contract with one another. Man, that's some good ass animation to that water, dude. Wholesome slice of life. Looking at himself in the mirror. Hold on, that's fucking powerful. Wait up. All of this is automation, by the way. I love these shots. All of this is automation. A lot of times, like, how many of you guys can think about, like, how much, like, when you get up in the morning, right, you're manually breathing instead of automatic. You're being conscious of the way you breathe. You think about, I'm going to grab the toothbrush with my right hand. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of toothpaste. You know, I'm going to brush the right side of first or the center first. How many of you are actively thinking about every step that you're taking versus just ha being automated by it? Right. This whole thing is beautiful because it shows the beginning of like what his day is like. It shows a little bit of actual peace and tranquility, which I'm guessing is going to be interrupted. But also this. When you look in the mirror, do you see yourself? Or do you not? Is there some sort of distortion in the you that you see? In the dreams that you see, is, is it distorted in some way, shape, or form? Or is that you the real you? This is a beautiful fucking shot. In psychology, we often bring up mirror aspects. Not even a parataxic distortion. And in, in psychology, you know, especially when people start bringing up like, you know, concept of like uh, self image or whatnot, how do you view yourself when you look in the mirror? When you look in the mirror, are you a successful college student? Are you a student that's struggling to get by day by day, but yet you go out there and you wear the mask of like, hey, I'm totally fine. Nothing's hurting me. Are you like when you get up in the morning, are you like, fuck, I don't want to go to work. And you, you're you like, you know, that's the mask that you carry through with you or so on and so forth. This is powerful, dude. Because we all know he puts up his hair. He puts up his he puts up his hair. So is that when he puts up his hair, is that the mask that he chooses to wear? These guys. When it's like everything one of my happening? Japanese animes. Oh, here we go. Also, thanks so much for the follow, Kidia. I appreciate it, man. This is why it's powerful, like also, I, I think I just chose the wrong one. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Is he the he that he wishes to be? And I think that's why it's super duper important. Also, Kidia, thanks so much for the follow. I really appreciate it, mate. Damn, he grinds up his own fucking beans here, bro. Everyone, drop some Doritos for Kidia here for following us. Love you, mate. Appreciate you. <laughs> some good peace and quiet routine. And some smokes. Oh, shit. Man, I grind my own beat. Even with him there, it's peace and quiet. Oh, dude, this is like... Something's gonna come. Something's gonna come. I always grind my beans. <laughs> Hold on, dude. So then, is this the mask that he wears? 
That's powerful. Holy fuck, dude. Like, him in the morning, he chooses to go through his routine before he's able to go ahead and, like, put everything up. And I'm assuming once everything's up like this, chaos ensues. So when is he able to be his real self? His calm self? Or does he always have to wear... And also the shadow, bro. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Sorry. Look at that. He's just completely enveloped by shadow and like the way he's looking at himself and like genuinely like just like whatever. This is morning, right? As opposed to. Now half of his face is in shadow and half of it's not. This is awesome, dude. He's always himself. He's himself when he punches Denji in the. But what I'm talking about is like moments of growth, moments of distillery, moments of everything. Like he chose to be this, like put up his hair this way. He chose to do certain things in like this fashion. And it just makes me wonder why. Why does he chose like choose to go this far? You can make your hair, don't get me wrong. But why is this shit scene so important? Because it's him looking at himself. It's him realizing, you know, whenever you get up in the morning, a psychologist will go through with you on this, by the way. It's like, how do, what's your daily process? When you look in the mirror, who are you? For example, who are you guys? What is your role? Like, what are your roles that you assign to yourself? Yeah, that's his work mode. Activate. You don't miss none yet. I like how chill they are, though. This can't last forever, though. <laughs> Fuck me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> Shakovian God, bro! Check off coming in for the save! <laughs> oh, time to take a sip. Oh, fuck. I called it, guys. Oh, fuck. That's a shot. Oh, thanks for the spicy hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> it just got a lot more lively. She would behave. You sure about that? You sure about that? Hey, yo, careful with that, yeah. Don't fling your vegetables. Fucking eat them, dude. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I mean, this is sort of why I brought it up, dude. Hey, it ha as much as some people were probably like, ew, or whatever. It fucking makes sense, dude. Hey, someone that's been out in the fucking wild, survival instincts. Remember when I was talking about this at the beginning of the episode? Guess what? They might not know. They might not know that it's like you have to do this every fucking time. And aside from that, you have to like go shower and brush your teeth and put on the order in or whatever the fuck, dude. Like a lot of people need to like, especially if they were just thrown in there, like it, it just give her a litter box. <laughs> Flush it. <laughs> I like how they're both teaming up on her, by the way. <laughs> I like how they're both teaming up on her. They're both like, yo, you want to live here? You got to start adjusting, like, now. <laughs> that face, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're fucking bonding over that. I'm like, dude. Oh, 
そう流せねえのか悪魔は野菜も残すしおいうる<笑>あおいクソ悪魔てめえのクソこびりついて取れねえんだよおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおえいよほれどうしたうれしいじゃろもめもめあクイーンオナルトロンドマッジャガジョーケンガルオノオノムネオモンデイカイスーディスイスオノドンタウミデイヨーガナパブラヴィザーズキーシーガイスオンノパヴロヴ is essentially why we get a lot of reward system nowadays because guess what this is also how you train dogs if they do something good you get a treat is this how do you we're gonna condition him you're, you're gonna pav love his ass dude <laughs> are you gonna is this how it's gonna work like hey you did one good thing you get to squeeze my boob right can't wait to get a treat monty can't wait oh shit dude i'm a little There, oh, it's a reinforcement training. Yeah, yeah. Some mummy, some mummy. Miako, Tasketa no Gashitomo. Oh, you are. No, so stay. Tom Magakara was so covered. No, some mummy. No, 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 Same, my brother. Same. Hey, yo, we all got needs, brother. We all got needs. We gotta have met in some way, shape, or form. And for a dummy mommy? But this can also turn really manipulative really fucking quickly if she keeps this up. I'll let you squeeze my boobs if you do what I want. Like, hey. No, the parataxic distortion is sitting. Oh, no. Oh, no. The pedestal work is sitting. No. She's an angel. No, don't put her up to high standards, my friend. You, you were just cleaning her turds a second ago. You were cleaning her fucking poop a second ago. And now you're like, she's a fucking angel. No. I, but that's your dream. I get it. I get it. It's understandable. It's p fucking parataxic distortion, man. It's when you put people up on a pedestal, dude. It's when you believe that they're so fucking great that none, like, their shit don't stink. Like, everything's wonderful. And even if it does, hey, guess what? You get a reward. Like, this is so, like, this is everything coming into play in a beautiful way because we saw when she was thinking about this. This is fucking insane, dude. This is insane. This is one of those, those shows where it's a halo effect, yeah. You were cleaning her turds a minute ago and now she's an angel. Exactly, cough me, exactly. Like... This is this is fucking awesome because earlier in the episode we saw her thinking about this when she was laying down looking at all of this and like you know oh wow his dream to touch my boobs and he's willing to go this far like the act of thinking about it and the payoff is there dude that's fucking wonderful this is top top shit wow wow that's yeah wow holy crap dude what a fucking show what a fucking show I love this show this is one of the few shows that like I can literally say is like There's a lot of stuff happening and a lot of wonderful、uh, everything. Yes, I'm going to watch the ending right now. I just want to go ahead and give my thoughts before we watch the ending, which is like, this show is completely like, you know, for me, it's, it's considerably like just keep, keeps going up episode by episode because there's a lot more to dig into. There's a lot more of that character dynamics at play, a lot more of the attachments being played on one another. The fact that this episode is touching on the aspects of dreams. Raccoon, you just missed all the love that we had for you. Everyone, drop, some, drop all your Doritos and love for Raccoon. Raccoon, we love you. We appreciate you for all the new emotes. You're absolutely fucking wonderful. Raccoon, just take it all. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful, Raccoon. There you go. Just take it all, Raccoon. You're, you're just 10 out of 10. Let's give, her, let's give her all the energy out of all the, the stuff and love that she's shown us, guys. 
let, let's go hard even with all the brady emotes and all the new shit that we have in here that's some 10 out of 10. we appreciate you raccoon you're fucking amazing we appreciate and love you for all the new emotes and everything that you've created for us but guys this this, this show is just I'm loving it, bro. This is this is fucking McDonald's and I'm loving it. Like I'm all in here, dude. I'm in here for this show. I'm in here for the content and like general like genuine discussion that this provides all of us. I am so down to see where this show goes and I'm excited for it. I'm excited for this. It's not an S tier. It's still an A plus tier. I if Great, great fucking show. Great everything, guys. I, I, I'm in love with this. This is a great show. This is one of those shows I, I, I don't know, dude. I, I, I'm just genuinely enjoying. Guys, holy fuck. Holy fuck. That was like an hour's worth of like genuine like discussion and everything. There's apparently a figure of power sitting on the toilet like that at the end of the episode. Hey, yo. I might have to throw that on my throne list. I ain't even gonna lie. Hey, yo.